Yo, what's going on people? It's your boy Ape Huncho, back at you again with another video. And so for this next one, we've got to head over to Hartlepool where a murder trial has recently just wrapped up that came as the result of rival drug dealers warring out with each other. Now, I can't elaborate on how well these separate drug dealers knew each other, but what we can say for sure is that for father of two, Hemawand Hussain, his feud with these rival drug dealers would go on to see him murdered in cold blood. By September of 2019, a 30-year-old Hemawand Ali Hussain was thought to have been involved in illegal cannabis farms so as you can see he was a somewhat big player within the criminal underworld and having this role obviously comes with its problems one of them being rival drug dealers. Now I can't pinpoint an exact date but all we know from reports is again by September of 2019 he had gotten into a feud with what the news would label as quote Albanian drug dealers. Now these Albanian drug dealers didn't take too kindly to Hemawand's rivalry with them and and so they hatched a plan in where they would take him out of the game altogether. And so a plan was made to do exactly that. In the days leading up to the murder of Hemawand, a meeting had taken place in Bolton. And although we don't know an exact date, what we do know is that four men by the names of Noza Safari, Zafari Anslo, Kwasim Marku, and Dorian Parija had been in contact with each other via phone calls between the 5th and the 12th of September 2019, along with four other men who, as of right now, the police are still actively searching for. It was thought that all men were actively moving around the country between these dates as well. On the 6th of September 2019, a grey Fiat 500 containing Noza Zafari and one of the other four still wanted by police was caught on CCTV at the B&Q store at Cleveland Retail Park on Skippers Lane in Middlesbrough. B&Q for my viewers from outside of the UK is basically just your standard hardware store. Here the men purchased an axe, gloves, cable ties, Stanley knife blades and a rope. The timeline then goes quiet for around six days or so and I can only assume from what we know about this case is that the men were seeking out a property to lure Hemawand into so they could act out on this plan and take him out the game once and for all. It was thought that a trap was going to be laid out because this new property was going to be put forward as a potential setup for a new cannabis farm. Remember, Hemawand himself was interested in the concern of cannabis farms. On September 12th, 2019, a property was sourced on Charterhouse Street, which was located in a relatively quiet area and was thought to have been a good place to potentially have a cannabis farm set up in. And this was thought to have been an attractive proposition set up by these rival drug dealers. So now that our property was sourced with Noza, Seferi, Kwasim and Dorian, along with the four other men still wanted by police, setting up the plan ready for this hit to be carried out, it was time to lure Hemawand to the property to act out on this plan. Now normally you'd associate Friday the 13th with being a bad day and whether the men intentionally planned the hit to be taken out on this day is unknown, probably not, but either way that was the day initially it was going to be set up on. Numerous calls were made to Hemawand on that day with Noza supposedly trying to contact him at various times whilst 8 calls were made from another phone. A text message had also been sent to Hemawand which read quote are you coming to see the stuff today? Let me know because I have other jobs to do. For whatever reason though, Friday the 13th wasn't the day it went down. It would actually be the following day on the 14th that would prove fatal for Hemawand. On that day, all we know for sure is that Hemawand had a two hour meeting with a group of Albanians before later attending the property on Charterhouse Street. At some point after entering the property, Hemawand would be blasted in the head at point blank range by a shotgun. It's speculated that it was as soon as he entered the front door, he was shot in the head. But again, as we get through the trial, you'll see why that might not necessarily be the case. And even though some of the group went out to buy supplies, which I'm guessing was for some kind of kidnap and torture techniques, they basically scrapped whatever idea they had and instantly killed him. A concerned neighbour would go on to call the police a short while later, and when emergency services arrived, they found Hemawand suffering from severe head injuries with lots of blood around his body. They would also go on to find the various items from the hardware store at the property 
and the axe was found to have Hemawan's blood and brain tissue on both the head of the axe and handle. Before the police arrived though, the group was captured on CCTV fleeing the scene where they jumped into a Santa Fe. They drove the Santa Fe to a Mercedes which was driven by Dorian who was parked up a distance away from the address and here the Mercedes drove everyone back to Bolton where at that point they all fled with some of the men leaving the country hence why police are still actively looking for them. Cuisine was captured on CCTV driving the Santa Fe away from Hartlepool before eventually setting fire to it in a country lane. Back to the scene though and around 12.24pm on the 14th of September 2019, Hemmer Wand Hussein would be pronounced dead by paramedics. After an investigation into this incident, all four men, that being Noza, Zafari, Kwasim and Dorian, would go on to be arrested and charged in connection with this incident. Again, there is four people who are still currently wanted by police in connection with this incident, but as it stands right now, they are yet to be identified and located. So, at a recent trial covering this incident, prosecutor Francis Fitzgibbon opened the trial by saying, just after 6pm on September 14th, 2019, in the front room of an empty house in Hartlepool, a man named Hemawan Hussein was shot in the head at point blank range with a sawn off shotgun and that shotgun to this day is still yet to be recovered. He continued that Hemawan had died instantly as a result of this. He would go on to tell the court that Hemawan himself was a drug dealer and had been led into the property for a meeting with other drug dealers and in turn this meant that he would go on to be murdered. He continued by telling them how Hemawan was originally a Kurdish national who was now a British citizen and he had made enemies with a group of Albanian drug dealers who decided to take him out and how all the people on trial played a vital role with at least four other men who have currently evaded arrest. A timeline of events would then be laid out to the court which we've already been over and talking of the attack itself it was described as quote happening very quick after he entered the property. Now if you guys remember we touched on the axe having brain matter on well according to the prosecution there was potential evidence that Hemmerwand had been hit with that axe before eventually going on to be shot in the head. Nicola Claire Taylor a senior forensic scientist would go on to give details of DNA of evidence to the court which had been collected from the scene and from the handle of the axe. She would go on to say that forensic findings possibly indicated that Hemmerwand was shot near to the window and close to the floor of the lounge at the property, adding that there may have been an initial struggle that caused the blinds near to the scene to quote be removed from its fixings. She continued by saying that an unknown male may have pushed or pulled Hemmerwand by the left shoulder region and that after being shot he fell into the position of which he was found but wasn't struck when found in this final position. She did go on to say though that forensic findings taken from the axe were quote readily explained if Hemawand was struck with the axe before being shot. In court, Noza Safari would give evidence and would go on to say that he worked as a handyman offering services for jobs such as painting, plumbing and wallpapering to quote, just make money. He said he was introduced to Hemawand in the years prior through friends. He confirmed that he'd been in contact with Hemawand in September and said that Hemawand asked him to help with house repairs and doing up houses. When he was asked in court about the meeting at the property, Noza confirmed he had discussed going there with Hemawand and Albanians. The reason for this, he said, was because he had been asked to make adjustments to the property, which included plastering the living room and making the kitchen larger. On the day of September 14th, 2019, Noza did say that Hemawan had called him on the morning and said that he would pick him up at around 4pm to go to the property. However, he did not come to take him to Charterhouse Street. Noza ordered a taxi from Lawrence Street in Middlesbrough, where he'd borrowed money from a friend and was then dropped off on Oxford Road in Hartlepool. It was there he met up with Hemawand, which was captured on CCTV, and the pair then travelled to Charterhouse Street in his vehicle. Noza said that when they arrived, they were let in by a man, and they both went into the sitting room, and then another man came in from the kitchen, who had a gun with him. He added, someone else came from upstairs and took me into the kitchen, he had an axe with him. It was then Noza claims that he lit up a cigarette outside of the property and remained smoking whilst next to the sink in the kitchen. He said he remained there for less than one minute and then heard a conversation about 10 kilograms of drugs. He would then go on to say that after this, himself and Hemawand were made to sit on the floor in the sitting room on their knees with Noza positioned opposite to where Hemawand was. He then said how the man with the gun had then pointed it at Hemawand and fired. 
which led to him being killed. When asked if he was involved in criminal activity, Noza declined this and saying that although he was known to Hemawand and he had been in contact with the Albanians, this was purely down to doing repairs to the house. The jury was told that Noza was in fact a police informant and had been for the months prior leading up to Hemawand's death. He was even as quoted as saying that he was proud of his actions, going on to say that he spoke about the crimes of the Albanians and of his friend Hemawand. The prosecution asked him why he informed on Hemawand if they were friends, to which he responded, it doesn't matter, if someone is doing something against the law, it doesn't matter even if we are friends. The prosecution then asked, when did you discover that Hemawand was involved in cannabis cultivation? To which he responded, in the past, many people mentioned this, he was known among people. In September, he told me that police had raided two of his properties and damaged them in Darlington. He asked me to repair them. Noza added that the first time he became aware of Hemawan's criminal activity was in June or July of 2019 when there was a fight on Victoria Road in central Middlesbrough. He said that guns were involved between Kurds and Albanians and later gave police a list of names of those involved. The prosecution asked Noza if he informed on Hemawand as a way of revenge for something that Hemawand and his associates had previously done to him, to which he responded that he never done anything bad to him. Now, even though Noza gave up all this evidence, the prosecution didn't accept his testimony in regards to his timeline of events of the killing of Hemawand. And his defense would go on to say that the prosecution presented him as a quote, rather ridiculous figure. They continued that Noza couldn't have been a part of an Albanian cannabis enterprise because the simple fact that he himself was Kurdish. Seferi also gave evidence in court and to sum up what he said, he basically said he had nothing to do with the murder that was planned, but did admit to being involved in the concern of cannabis farms and admitted he worked for higher ups within an organization. He claimed that on the Day of the murder he was nearby in Middlesbrough town with his girlfriend. He said he was drinking and in fact had even contacted some of the other group that were located in Hartlepool to see if they wanted to come and have a drink with him but the prosecution pulled up phone data evidence which showed that he had called his girlfriend around that time on his phone and claimed that if he was with his girlfriend around that time, then why was there need to call her? Either way though, after a trial in court, Noza, Kasim and Dorian were found guilty for their part in the killing of Hamawan Hussein, while Seferi was released after he beat the trial. In fact, even though these guys had been convicted, they were found not guilty of murder, rather found guilty of manslaughter, as it's thought the main people, including the shooter, were a part of the group of four that are still on the run, and these four in this case were, quote, little fish, so to speak. In the end, it was the CCTV footage that placed the men at the property at the time of the murder, the Santa Fe car which had been captured on CCTV carrying the group away from the scene and it being burnt out in a country lane, along with other evidence that would go on to find these men guilty on manslaughter charges. For their roles in the killing, Noza received 15 years, whilst Kwasim and Dorian both received 19 years. And so this story really does highlight the issues that come with being involved with drugs and the drugs trade. Now it really does go to show you the consequences of going at war or being a rival with different drug dealers and how cold-blooded that certain situations can be. That whole plan was laid out by a drugs organisation to lure this man into this property to eventually shoot him in the head at point